Crossbone Radio Wave, bringing you the fun in Card Fight Vanguard. Good evening, everyone. This is Crossbone Vanguard. I'm Dempster, and I'll be your host for today. Crossbone Radio Wave is a radio show dedicated to bringing you anything and everything Crossbone Vanguards and Cup Flying Vanguard, including updates, announcements, and so on. Keep in mind that Crossbone Radio Wave is not an official radio show and is entirely inspired by Hibiki Radios, Radio Vanga G, and Radio Vanga G Next. So, I guess today is uh, by myself again, all by myself, so I'm, uh, I'm forever alone. <laughs> no, just kidding. Uh, but speaking of forever alone, uh, yesterday was Valentine's Day. It's the fourth, uh, it was the 14th of February yesterday, so um, happy Valentine's Day, everyone. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. We all know Valentine's isn't just for couples. That's why you got me over here talking about Valentine's Day. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's very sad, but don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You've got me. I can keep you company for the next 30 or so minutes. But either way, <laughs> as long as you cherish your, your friends and your loved ones, every day is a Valentine's Day. Uh, but I would like to rewind back on a week earlier because we've already seen a preview of uh, what Fighters Collection 2017 contains. And let me tell you, it's really, really promising. Uh, I've done a, a video about it called What Happened, so do check that one out. But if you haven't, don't worry, I'll just do a quick recap over here. So 2017, um, they have released a, a few new information before uh, in the week before. Uh, uh, in uh, poster format so uh, for those who are collectors of the Vanguard um, posters you, you know what to expect already uh, but for those who don't uh, just a quick recap uh, some of the things in there are uh, oh, they've already um, shown eight clans uh, showcase eight clans and what they will contain in there so uh, it's been confirmed that every single clan will have one Hue Trigger one G Guardian and one G unit uh, for every single one of them and there are a total of 24 GRs in there, so I'm guessing the GR is the G guard, uh, either the either the G guardian or the G uh, the the G unit. <laughs> what am I thinking? But yeah, the heel trigger. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it could have a chance as well. But um, knowing them, I think they'll just leave it as a fall. Uh, but who knows? You know, uh, I, I really I'm really hoping Bushiro will surprise me over here. But. Uh, we won't know until uh, the set actually comes out. But uh, not only that, because uh, well, as you have as you have heard, it, uh, there'll be a total of 24 G uh, generation rares. So yeah, the to total of 24 clans. Every single clan will have at least uh, one. So don't worry, uh, don't don't worry about too much about you know not getting the stuff that you want. But because this one is literally for everyone, so everyone can have what they like, and you know. Some some familiar units make a return as well. Like for my case, uh, as I've mentioned, as I have um, very very uh, repeatedly mentioned <laughs> in the video, uh, I'm, I'm a huge fanboy of Los Angeles Makers and Amar Terasu. So uh, when I saw the poster that came out, uh, you know, they are showing when they are showing Los Angeles Makers and Amar Terasu there, I'm like, oh yes, Los Angeles Makers, <laughs> you know, because Bay. Uh, anyway, it was a very bad joke. And of course, Ami Chang, yeah, which is which is the affectionate my affectionate way of calling Amar Terasu. So. Uh, it, it, I mean, looking at it, it's pretty much confirmed. Los Angeles Makers will be the new true trigger for the G unit uh, for the, with a skill. Hopefully, it's not a reprint because if it is, I will really flip a table. Uh, and by that, I mean Bushiro's meeting table. But that's for another time. But in any case, um, the G Guardian. Well, uh, it looks like a Magus, so I believe Los Angeles Makers will become a G Guardian herself. Uh, and not only that, the G unit, uh, which it's pretty obvious, it's already Amaterasu. So in, uh, other than the G Guardian variation of herself, you'll also get to see a G unit. So, uh, well, the, the only way I can I can sort of get myself hyped over is to speculate what skills it has. So Amaterasu, I, I'm guessing they're going to play along with the fact that you get to check the top cut. And I put it at the top or bottom, so charge and things like that. Um, but because she's a G unit, uh, of course, she have those same skills but updated. So it's a bit like Tsukuyomi when she first came out in Fighters Collection 26, uh, 2015. So we won't know until it actually comes out. So I'm really, really, really excited and waiting for it. And not only that, on the Kagiro side, uh, I believe uh, Leon mentioned that there will be a Blazing Flare Dragon or, or something like that. So do let me know if it's correct or not. But like, like I said, <laughs> we won't know until it actually comes out. It's literally just speculation from our side right now because now they are currently um, releasing the cards for the Rami Labyrinth um, box. So until until then, we will only get to see um, the Rami Labyrinth and the Blaster deck, um, the Sendo IG, um, the Blaster, the Legend decks. So this we will see card previews for the uh, for these two sets until uh, when it comes to May. Then we will start to see more and more cards from Fighters Collection. So. Uh, <laughs> If you're wondering, uh, my voice is actually a little bit raspy right now, but uh, we'll, we'll leave that to the next section. So right now, let's jump straight into the radio show itself. So, I'm ready. Are you ready? Because we are going to do this. <clears throat> 
、せーの。スタンダップヴァンガードクロスボーンラディオウェイ、bringing you the fun in car fight vanguard. This program is brought to you by c r o s s b o n e v a n g u a r d s c r o s s b o n e Radio Wave, bringing you the fun in c a r d fight Vanguard. Good evening once again, this is Dempster.、Um, like I mentioned,、uh, <laughs> there are quite a lot of things to talk about,、uh, and especially the reason why my voice is a bit raspy. But,、um, so before we, before we move to the talk about this week's.、Um, Any, uh, the episode of c a r f i g h t Vanguard Gen X.、Uh, I'm just going to talk about what I've been doing for the past few weeks. So,、uh, this, this has been like going on for quite a while, a, 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 month, a month or so to be exact.、Uh, but I have been preparing for a very large scale competition uh, that, uh, that happened on the weekend,、uh, which is on the well, 11th and 12th February. So, there was an on ground audition.、Um, On, in Singapore for a competition called I Can Sing in Japanese,、uh, hosted by Jam TV Asia. So、um, I was preparing for the competition because I was shortlisted as part of the top 12,、um, the, top finali- uh, well, the, the top 12, the, uh, which are the finalists, shortlisted finalists for this uh, on ground con-、uh, competition. And f- among Uh, the two of us, we're gonna, t- we, we were supposed- we're gonna sing our be- very best. <laughs> I don't know why I'm fumbling and all, but、uh, we're gonna sing our very best. And the one, with- the one who wins will get the chance to fly to Japan to sing in, the- in-, in Japan's Nodojiman, the world itself.、Uh, this has been a very huge thing for me because when I first saw this happening, I was like, you know. Going to Japan and being able to do something that I really like has been a huge dream for me. But、uh, I never actually got the chance to because, first of all, Japan is very expensive to go to. So,、uh, money is a huge issue. Secondly, it's because of time, because of my day job.、Uh, I, won't, I wasn't able to you know, find time to go there as and when I please, unless for some reason my work requires me to go to Japan. But I don't think this is going to happen at all. So, <laughs> the only other way is to go,、uh, go there through competitions. And、uh, this is one of them. So, I was shortlisted、uh, as part of the 12,、uh, con- 12 finalists.、Um, and mind you, this is not just in Singapore, this is throughout the whole Asia. So, we have contestants from,、um, from Thailand, we have contestants from Hong Kong, or,、uh, Australia,、uh, we have contestants from Malaysia. Malaysia, <laughs> Malaysia, <laughs> I'm sorry.、Uh, and of course,、uh, myself included,、uh, there's also another person that's competing in Singapore as well. And of course, the Philippines,、uh, Indonesia, and so on and so forth. So the 12 of us,、uh, well, we, we had, I, had, I personally had a very wonderful、um, experience there. Because it was, you know, it's, it's my first、um, large scale competition because the, the previous competitions that I've joined are not like, you know, they're not as big as like international standards. So it's just local, you know,、uh, a, bunch of, a bunch of us locals and maybe some Japanese come together. They we sing and then the winner gets some prize and that's about it. You know, like, go away. <laughs> come back next year. <laughs> Things like that. So、uh, for, for such a huge competition, I, I cannot afford to mess up on myself. So this is the kind of unnecessary pressure I put up on myself. So <laughs> I've been pre-、uh, I've been prepared. Preparing and practicing for, for, for that day. So, on the day itself,、um, well, how, how should I say this? Because it was like literally the first time I got to meet、um, contestants from around, the, around the, the whole region of Asia. So, it was very, very exciting. And,、uh, well, <laughs> believe it or not, there were actually some people that I know in there already, and some people who are also in the same project group that I, I'm currently in. And、uh, it, it's really a small world, let's just put it that way. It's, a, it's really such a small world that we're like, oh, you're in this group too? Yeah, I am. And then we started talking and talking, and everything just clicked together just like that. I'm sorry,、um, like that. Damn it, I can't get the snap right. <laughs> anyway, you get, you get the idea. So,、uh, when the audition time came,、uh, it, was, it was very, very nerve wracking.、Um, I, I could feel myself literally shaking on the stage. And,、uh, well, because the, the rehearsal for that is in the morning, so my voice was not completely open. And、uh, I tried to, well, <laughs> I tried to practice in, in, in my room. And it,、well, it didn't really work very well because you know, it's not open and all. And I, I was very worried that I couldn't, I couldn't pull it off as, as, as I normally could. On the audition itself, but、uh, apparently it didn't happen that way. It, my, my voice opened before the audition even began, and of course, I drank a lot of water. I drank a warm water, tea, and, and things like that. So, I was sort of prepared for, for the audition. So, I mean, It is very natural for me to, you know, like for, for people when they're on stage, they start shivering and all due to the nervousness. But I try to counter that thinking that, you know, this is not a competition. I'm just coming here and sing my heart out 
and uh, I'm just gonna do my best in a song that I really want to portray my whole emotion, my full emotions out. Um, just for you guys know, my the song that I ch- that I chose was um, Digimon Frontier, <laughs> sorry, Digimon Adventure Try, uh, Wada Koji's uh, Butterfly Try Edition. So that was the song I sang on stage, and uh, well. <laughs> I, I could tell that I missed like here and there due to the pitching and stuff, but the rhythm was still pretty much okay. And I, overall, I felt I did a really good job. Uh, but of course, I didn't win because <laughs> you know you win some, you lose once. Uh, you you win some, you lose one, uh, you lose some. So this is the one I lost. Uh, but it, it's okay because I know I did my best and I know where I stand now in terms of like international standards, well or inter regional standards. So I know what I can improve on from there, and hopefully you know I can come back in the next season and 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 sing again. Uh, but along the way, uh, I'm uh, you know meeting with the rest of the contestants. It was really very, very, very nice. Everyone was so friendly and so um, it is so easy to hang out with. Uh, like just after the audition, uh, a, f- a few of us went out together to have dinner, and oh my god, there was nothing but laughter all the way. Uh, we we weren't just talking about things that we like, like say what anime and what games and things like that. We also talked about other things, like just literally anything under the sun. Although it was night time over there, but that's not the point. <laughs> But uh, I well, how should I say this? We we had a lot of fun. It's it's almost like we we knew each other a long time ago, and um, we we one one topic led to another. We just kept on talking and talking and talking, and it never ended. So, it's it's a kind of memory that I will never forget. It's something that I will always remember for a lifetime. So uh, I I really I really had a lot of fun with. Well, in the during the audition, and I really had a lot of fun with everyone um, who participated in it. So a shout out to Sochiet, Janet, Brittany, Ray, Malfi, uh, Bernie, Anna, Krisha, Rika, Jamapron, and Danakrit for being so amazing throughout these two two short days. It felt really short, but uh, the whole the it, we the way we talk is just like we've met each other for such a long time. You know, it's like it's been a long day without you, my friend. Okay, anyway, <laughs> but you get what I mean. Uh, it's like. Uh, it feels it feels so comfortable to hang out with them, and I really want to see them again. So, <laughs> thank you all very much for making this a wonderful experience for me, and I really hope to see you all again soon, be it in in your own countries, in Singapore, or even in Japan. I mean, heck, you know, why why not? Like you know, just one of these days, all of us go to Japan together and and just have fun there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> that, that will be in the future because I know I'm going to see a few of y'all again pretty soon. I'm not sure when, but well, one of these days, I, I suppose. So <laughs> anyway, uh, I, I, I've, I think I've done enough talking about myself. So now let's move on to the, the most recent anim- uh, re- episode of the anime, Cut 5 Vengaji Next, Turn 19, Sorrow Sky Stra- uh, sorry, Sorrow Skyscraper, or in Japanese, Katsubo no Matendo. So... Under 20 has reached its conclusion of day 2 and everyone has you know, sort of gone home, left Kray and went home. <laughs> but there was something there was something troubling going on in Fukuhara's uh, high school Vanguard club. Uh, apparently Rin felt that you know it was like very boring uh, and she she doesn't she felt like you know she shouldn't be led on by Shion anymore. So she she decided to leave the club and the team uh there and then and uh well Hayao Hayao Anri was like very you know very freak, freaked out like the like the like the nerd senpai he is <laughs> sorry about that but anyway uh, he was like oh my god what do I do without you you're like you're like the best person to be in my team and then and then the Shion over there who likes to t- trash talk you oh my god what are you what are you two doing why are you fighting what am I fighting for <laughs> I can't believe I did that. Oh my gosh! <laughs> but yeah, so so the uh, the the main highlight of today uh, this week's episode is basically just um, Rain against Shion. You know, like resolve versus resolve. So uh, I, I like the I like how they give uh, Rain a lot more character development here right now, and she's like you know. Being the tsundere so-called queen that she is, which by the way I I really like her as a character, but that's besides the point. Uh, but anyway, she's she's very well developed here because uh, well, it it lets us know that you know she's she's joining she she's staying in the team not because of just you know um Shion letting her know that uh, if I join this team then uh Mamoru senpai will notice me or something like that. Which by the way, if you guys don't know, Rin has a crush on Mamoru. It's pretty obvious by now, but for just for those of you who do not know, so <laughs> don't worry, I got your back. 
I've got you in my sight. Anyway, <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah. So that's the main, the main highlight, and I feel that you know, the card, the cards they'll portray pretty well. It's just that I feel, um, Angel Feather is a little underboosted, I guess maybe. Um, uh, but that is just how I feel because now Royal Paladin has has things like you know Brave Lancer Dragon, but it wasn't showcased here. Instead, it was Luminous Hope, and Luminous Hope was oh my god, plus ten k for every face up, uh, face up, um, what was it the the. Uh, luminous hope, I guess. Wait, let me let me look for it. <laughs> Damn, I need I need to I need to understand more about Vanguard, uh, about, about Royal Paladin because this is one clan I rarely play. But anyway, uh, yeah, plus ten k for every uh, for every luminous hope dragon and uh, face up in the G zones, and then all your rear guards plus one k. So immediately, you know, just just at that very moment, that turn, the, all the rear guards are like, whoa, whopping big numbers. It's like holy cow. I, I have never imagined them to be that big before and it still counts as a multi attack because of Knight of Twin Sword and Slayman. So it's like you know keep the pressure going and the high powers coming as well. So um uh honestly I personally feel that Angel Feather is a good counter to that because uh you know with with the way you know with the way the power stacks up uh defensively, uh Gavro is very good against uh Automob, but of course it couldn't outspe uh, outspeed that. But this is just my personal opinion, so let us know. Uh let me let me know if you know it's very it's different from what you see. Uh but of course in order for the defensive stacks to 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 kick in, you you gotta take damage first. So you have to be very careful on that. And rescue usually it, it's it's usually very beneficial only during your turn. Well, then again, most rescue skills are during your turn anyway. But anyway, um, so the power stack plus the the, the trigger checks it helps on your turn. So you, you gotta really decide on whether you can finish off your opponent uh, on the turn itself, or if not, then you have you you gotta make sure that you are able to take the damage and you know. Uh, add power to both your rear guards and your vanguard for that matter. So you really have to play your cards right. And of course, not only that. Uh, well, there is also like you know a bit of a bit of um, f f cutaway, I guess, um, f for you know like character devel development for the team new Nippon. So um, well, they have a very interesting resolve, and that is to to fight and and win the tournament. Uh, to you know glory f to to. How should, I, how should I say this? To get the name out for Team Nippon, you know, to, to realize the dream that Team Nippon uh, wanted to, or something like that. But but I'm still very, uh, I'm a bit disturbed and a little annoyed at the fact that they, that Chrono still doesn't want to tell them that his dad is still alive. But I, I guess if, I guess if he told them right now, then they will lose the will to, to join the tournament. So I, I guess it's a good call of him for not saying anything. But that, um, that teppanyaki, it, it looks very... Or is it, is it okonomiyaki? Well, either way, the food looks very amazing. I want to try that one day. Uh, if, if anyone knows where that place is in Japan, please let me know. <laughs> I really want to try it. Okay, next we have fan mail. So this week's uh, <laughs> this week's mail is sent to us by Mag Massimo Channel again. So as always, thank you very much for your mail. Hi, Dempster. Hi. I keep following your show and I still love it. And I find it amazing that you also bring in different guests like a real radio show. Keep on going. Thank you very much. And I really wish I can bring in more guests in the future. But most of the time, it's just me, by the way. So anyway, uh, I want to ask you about your opinions about the new Aichi Legend deck. Like, what do you think of it? And what skill do you wish that the new Blaster Blade has? Great job for everything. And thanks for reading my mail. Thank you again, Mike Massimo, for sending the mail in. Um, wow. Aichi Legend deck. Um, honestly, I'm not a... I'm not a avid Royal Paladin player myself, so I can't really answer on on behalf of my fellow Royal Paladin players like Jiraiya, um, uh, Victor, Cap, and Leon as well. I mean, I do play um, the well the the Alfred the Swordsman of Light series, I guess, but the Blaster not so much. So I can't really say for sure. But the new Blaster Blade, um, Blaster Blade Exceed, uh, well by the looks of it, uh, I can I can almost sort of confirm it as a really good, it's gonna be a great three already. So. Other than that, um, well, maybe it will have like Blaster Dark Diablo skill, like for example, um, like maybe when you ride on this card, then you can do something like retire one of your opponent's rear guards or something like that. Or when you strike, then you retire or something. Uh, I, I can't really say for sure because if they were to, you know what, if, if, if you want to go through the, the whole tradition of the Legend decks, I guess that's the way it's going to be. But, you know, sometimes Bushiro likes to throw in uh, throw in the, something else in the mix and just confuse the heck out of everyone. So, uh, I, I, I can't say for sure, but personally, I hope that, you know, uh, Blaster Blade's uh, destruction skill, if he still has it, uh, I hope it's not like a continuous thing, like when you stride 
or, or something like that. Uh, hopefully, it's just an on-right skill on its own and you pay the cost, maybe like counter blast one or so blast one or counter blast two for the meta and then you retire one of your opponent's rear guards. Maybe in the front row or the back row, whichever, I, I don't really care. Just retire something. And uh, hopefully, you know, this can help change the, the game as it is now, uh, especially, you know, to counter against grade one rush decks. You can use cards like these to retire um, the front row rear guards so that they have one less attack or, you know, you can throw more cards out to guard, uh, to not, ju not just the guard, to to call to attack uh to maintain the, the field presence for attacking but that's just me so uh like i said i can't really say too much about it but i am kind of excited about the new ig legend deck and i really want to see what it's like um especially since you know i watched i watched the enemy since season one not on the day it was released but you know i i i caught up as much as i could uh so i I'm, I'm very familiar with units like galatine Mar uh, maron uh, Alfred himself, Blaster Blade, and things like that. So I really, I'm really, i really excited to see um, how these units will evolve in terms of not just the lore, but the deck itself, like how they how they fit with one another. So, well, I, I hope that uh, answers your question, and thank you again very much for sending us an email, and for all of you, the rest of you, uh, keep sending these mails coming. Crossbone Raider Wave, bringing you the fun in Card Fight Vanguard. Next up is, what's that card? Man, it feels awkward to say that on my own. Anyway, this is the section where I pick a random card from a random clan and describe it in the most cryptic way possible and you guys are going to guess what card I am describing. Uh, I will announce the answer at the end of the show, so listen on if you want to know whether you're correct or not. So this week, we have a card that is from the Gold Paladins. Why am I getting Paladins nowadays? I, I don't get it. <laughs> well, the card before was Genesis. I mean, my, mostly cards from, uh, I don't know, the United Century? <laughs> But I swear, these are all randomly generated and all, and uh, <laughs> just to let you guys know, this is all in the name of fun, so you won't get anything if you get it right, or you won't lose anything if you didn't get it right. So don't worry, this is just to get your brains thinking, you know, because uh, a radio show, it's more, it's supposed to, you know, get the fans uh, interacted as well. It interact, it's an interaction between us and you guys as well. So anyway, this card from Go Paladin. Um, Alright, it's a great tool with the intercept, 5,000 shield and 9,000 base power, one critical, and he's a human. <laughs> he's a very, very, he's more human than any other humanism. Anyway, <laughs> alright, um, he's got one skill, uh, it's a rear guard skill obviously, but uh, one interesting thing to know that, and, and this will, make, will give it away, um, especially for those who are very into the, uh, who have been following the game since the beginning, but this card shares a skill with another card. Uh, I won't say what skill I won't say what skill it is and I won't say what what you know what other clan I'm, I'm mentioning and all but he has a similar skill and one single skill and uh, well the looks of him he's, he's he's clad in gold armor he's got a laser cape and uh, oh it looks like a laser cape but it looks more like a uh, a gold plate I think of it like a Gundam he's wearing a backpack <laughs> and his shoulder has some um, blue fire I suppose uh, but it looks more like you know this kind of um, thrusters um, coming out from a Gundam back in. Why, why, why am I talking about all Gundams all of a sudden? But anyway, it looks like that. You know, it's like thrusting off his shoulders, like ready to to dash in and then slice you with this photon sword. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it looks like photon sword to me. Um, the blades, the blades literally look like you know um, blue plasma, and the sword itself looks very futuristic. And this this unit has got um, you know, it looks like dark blue hair, I believe. Hold on, let me let me zoom it up. Yep. Dark blue hair with a blue, blue highlights and all, and it's, it's it's interesting to note that um the whole armor has like uh the how should I call this it? like the you know the the royal paladin um some of the highlights so the, those um LEDs <laughs> for cosplayers we should know like there are certain strips um uh, that, that look like they're glowing blue neon lights so that's that's what this armor looks like it's a, it's a bit like the orbital frame if you've played on the Enders but um. Yeah, the, the whole background is a mix of purple and blue, so I think that's about all the description that I can think of, uh, and if you know the answer, keep it to yourself, we'll, we'll go all the way to the end, and then you'll find out whether you're correct or not. Crossbone Radio Wave, bringing you the fun in Card Fight Vanguard. Card Trivia of the Day!
This is the section where we pick a certain card and talk about it in as many details as possible, such as the skill it has, the artwork, its use in the deck, and of course random trivia about the unit. If you have any picks on what card you would like us to talk about, feel free to drop a comment on our social medias or send us an email, all of which will be mentioned at the end of this show. So today's card brings us back to the United Century once again. I, why? Why United Century of all places? <laughs> and to the clan of Royal Paladin. So, because today we are going to talk about the leading jewel knight Salome. Or if you want to be really, really fancy with her Japanese name, Michibiki no Hoseki Kishi Salome. Yeah, I know they just say leading jewel knight in the Japanese version, but come on, let me have my fun. <laughs> okay, so. Salome is from BT10, Triumphant Return of the King of Knights, and a, uh, and a rarity, and a rarity of Triple R. <laughs> she is a Grade Three unit with a base power of ten thousand, which is not so much right now because every single um, Grade Three, well, most of the Grade Threes right now, at least the Ace, uh, as far as I am concerned, is eleven thousand. But that was back then, so. Yeah, so she has two skills. The first skill is an auto limit break skill which grants her extra 2000 power and a critical when she attacks if you have four or more rearguards on the field with Jewel Knight in their names. Uh, this is consistent with the so-called standards for the Jewel Knight skills uh, which is four rearguards for the Vanguard uh, or three other rearguards for the rearguard. So basically, um, as much as a whole f full field, uh, you only can afford one missing rearguard circle for the skills to kick in. But of course, you know, knowing Royal Paladin and especially the Jewel Knights, they are able to flood the field as it is um, with a certain cost. So uh, I don't think that's something that you should bother with too much, except for the critical. <laughs> yep. So her second skill uh, is an X skill that allows you to superior call any Jewel Knight on the field. Uh, to the field if you choose to pay the cost of two a special counter blast for those of you who do not know what uh, what the term is it's a very old term that uh, a lot of people used to use and some of us still do right now a special counter blast means you counter blast cards um, that have a certain key, uh, a certain either a certain keyword or a certain sub clan so for example for jewel knights uh, in the case of jewel knights uh, a special counter blast will be counter blasting cards with jewel knights in the names and uh, for eradicators eradicators and so on like that so this skill may be used for more than once per turn as uh, as there are no specific restrictions, just as long as you can pay the cost, you can keep on spamming it. But just to note, uh, most people will not rely heavily on a skill to spirit call, but will rather use it as the start of the chain with skills of other units. So, for example, like say um, you you're you're at Salome right now, you kind of blast two, you call out one sort me. Uh, for those who know what sort me is, yes, it's a very cancerous card back then, but now it's now he's only be he's only able to be played in the Joanna like deck. So don't worry about that. So sort me will it is is literally like the 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 Royal Paladin version of Agroval. So so when he's appear when he appears from the deck to the rearguard circle, you kind of blast one. You call another um, great one or less jewel knight out. So you can either choose to call the limit breaker or you can choose to call Sli uh, what was his name Prismi, and allows you to drop one and draw one to refresh your hand and uh, and to you know to filter the deck in a much more efficient way. Um, so yeah, not many people will choose to use that. So, who are the Jewel Knights? Uh, Jewel Knights is uh, a title handed out to the elite knights in the first army of the Royal Paladin. The names come from the equipment, which is the armor and the weapons, which has jewels embedded in them. And these jewels are said to possess magical power. So, say for example, um, Topaz will give you the power of lightning. Um, uh, what is that again? Um, the uh, sapphire. Sapphire will grant you the power of water. Ruby, the power of fire, and maybe emerald, the power of wind or earth or something like that. So, you, you get the gist. So about Salome herself, despite being called the leading jewel knight, uh, she's actually not the grandmaster of the jewel knights, but actually the deputy, uh, the deputy master. And the current grandmaster is Ashley. And uh, just a quick note, Evangeline is a future grandmaster, uh, according to the law from Monthly Bushiro. So Salome was born from a royal family, and her, uh, her upbringing can be seen in an arsenal of abilities, combat, politics, and strategies. So if she were a real life politician, I think she would do pretty well. But I digress. <laughs> So as seen in her card art, uh, she's not only wielding a sword but also a staff in her left hand, which can imply that she can use magic proficiently as well. I mean, after all, elves are commonly portrayed as uh, being experts on the use of magic and spells. Uh, if you play World of Warcraft, you should know that. You should know what I mean. <laughs> Uh, and she often helps her allies as much as she can, from assisting Ashley to very trivial duties like, I, I don't know, um, sweeping up the floor for United Sanctuary or uh, weaving clothes for damaged units or whatever. 
But looking at it, another way you can call like you can call her the the mother of the group. So she's like you know the big Kasang feature. But I think personally, I'll call her the Onyechan uh, because she looks like that. And also another thing interesting to note that um, the artwork for Salome is done by <laughs> it sounded like salami. Sorry, uh, the artwork for Salome is done by Hagia Kaoru. So props to her again for doing such an uh, amazing artwork. And not only that, the, if you've noticed very carefully uh, in the background of the artwork for Salome, uh, she actually has a United Century flag behind her. So, yep, she is literally the mother <laughs> of the of the whole uh, Druonites and maybe even the whole royal, royal paladin at the time. So, anyway, um, on to other random trivias. Interestingly, the most commonly known person with the name Salome is actually from the Bible. Uh, while there are, while there are many women with this name, the one being referred to here was the daughter of King Herod the Second and the granddaughter of Herod the Great, uh, which is the same one that intended to kill infant Jesus after hearing about him from the three magi. Um, I'm not very familiar with that, so I'm sorry about that, but if you know, please let us know in the comments uh, or in the email because I'm quite interested in this now. <laughs> so she's most famous for requesting the head of John the Baptist on the silver platter after her stepfather promised her anything she wished for um, after pleasing him with a dance at the banquet of sorts. So she made that choice after consulting her mother who was at odds with him and wanted him dead. Wow, that was really dark. And to have a unit that's named after her, that's... Well, well, then again, there's Amaterasu, there's Susano, so anyway, I digress. So this event has been adapted into a famous play by the Irish writer Oscar Wilde. If you guys know um, Oscar Wilde, that's a good thing. And uh, if you guys don't, then head over to Encyclopedia if it's still up there, and you'll know what Oscar Wilde is all about. <laughs> it's a meme, but uh, uh, again, I digress. So if you want to know more about Oscar's, uh, Oscar Wilde's Salome, you can look it up online to see if there's anything out there that interests you. Um, so go on and look look out for it because there are, I'm, I'm pretty sure there are a lot of materials that you can read up on about Salome herself but if you not if you don't then you can always head to wiki to find out more about Salome uh, the unit Salome herself the leading draw knight Salome uh, of course I would like to thank Jo for helping me write this week's card trivia of the day because I figured that she needed something else to write on other than her daily stuff <laughs> I'm just kidding I'm just kidding but anyway that's all for this week's card trivia of the day and let us know what card you would like us to talk about next Crossbone Radio Wave, bringing you the fun in Card Fight Vanguard. Crossbone Information! This is where we bring you news about upcoming releases, local events, and insights about Card Fight Vanguard and Crossbone Vanguards. G Booster Set 10, Raging Clash of the Blade Fangs, is now on sale. So this set includes further support for Royal Paladin, Shadow Paladin, Gold Paladin, Tachikaze, Murakumo, Nova Grappler, Neon Actor, and of course, Cray Elemental. In English format, G Trial Deck 11, Divine Knight of Heavenly Decree, and G Trial Deck 12, Flower Princess of Abundant Blooming will be released on Friday, February 17th. So be sure to get these sets and trial decks and enhance your Vanguard experience. The Anime Card Fight Vanguard G next airs at Card Fight Vanguard's official YouTube channel every Sunday at 10am. At the same time, tune in to Crossbone Vanguard's YouTube channel for a new Card Fight every Thursday at 6pm. And of course, tune in to our daily gaming live stream every Sunday at 7pm. That is all for Crossbone Information. Crossbone Radio Wave, bringing you the fun in Card Fight Vanguard. This marks the end of today's episode of Crossbone Radio Wave. I hope you guys enjoyed it because I certainly did, um, especially doing up all these uh, weird things and all, and of course talking about my personal experience uh, in, in, in the single competition. But that's a separate thing because that just so happened to be the right time for me to talk about it. But anyway, uh, let's move on to the answer for what's that card. So. Uh, there, there, there are literally only two choices for that card uh, if, you are, if you are unfamiliar But the card I'm talking about for this week's What's That Card is Citation Liberator Heli Or in Japanese Shochi no Liberator Heli So uh, this card is a great to intercept uh, 5000 shield and 9000 base power And his, single, his one and only single skill is Counter Blast 1 and move this unit into your soul When this unit's attack hits a vanguard You may pay the cost if you do, look at the three cards from the top of your deck, search for up to one of them among them, call into an open rearguard circle and put the rest to the bottom of your deck in any order. 
So why I say this has a similar skill with another card because the other card, which is Holy Mage Elio, has the exact same skill as Heli. Uh, and Elio is, uh, I should say he is more um, affordable because he's included in every single start deck for the Gold Paladin, which is Knight of the Sun, Pyo's uh, start deck. So if you played Elio, then chances are you've already played Elio. <laughs> But his use in the deck back then was pretty good because, um, well, despite being a single R, which back then if you buy cartons, he's like very, he, he comes in a lot of copies. But anyway, um, well, the, th the main thing about him is that, uh, oh, he's in Your Messiah, by the way. <laughs> but anyway, I, I digress. Uh, but anyway, his, his usefulness at, at, at the moment of time is, uh, is an on hit, on hit threat. So especially for a deck like um, Prominence Call and Crom Prominence Glare, it, it's good for like say a cheap. Um, well, I won't say a cheap. He's he's like a a, 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 a a more affordable alternative to other cards. Like say if you don't get a full copy of Agroval or if you don't get a full copy of the other Agroval, which I believe, by if you are playing a Prominence Call or Glare deck, you should have at least four of it. So, but anyway, um, for other cards like say like the 12k attacker, if you don't have that, you can you can play with Heli for added pressure as well, and you don't have to worry about not running out uh, or decking out because you can Legion back those cards and keep the cycle going. But of course, people have better alternatives uh, at that point of time already, so he's not as much mentioned until Holy La Holy Mage Elio came out because both him and Elio um they do not have like specific um sub clans or whatsoever to call out, so you can literally call anything within the top three. Uh, it's not just bound by Liberator, it's not just bound by, say, Gurgrit or things like that. So you can you can use him in a generic deck, uh, or a budget deck for that matter, and make sure, you're, make sure you call out more and more units if, uh, you know, to, to keep the attack going. So just want to let you guys know that we are always open to fan mails and we'll be waiting for them. So if you have one, do send it to our email at crossbonevanguards at gmail.com. That's C-R-O-S-S-B-O-N-E dot V-A-N-G-U-A-R-D-S at gmail.com. Once again, that's C R O S S B O N E dot V A N G U A R D S at gmail.com. If you have any questions you would like to ask us, feel free to send them in to us as well. Uh, of course, you can send them to us at our socials too. We are on Twitter at Crossbone VGS, Facebook at Crossbone Vanguards, and not to mention follow us on our blog at crossbonevanguards.com, where we post deck profiles, event coverages, and other things we cannot post on our YouTube channel. So with that said, thank you all very much for listening to this week's Crossbow Radio Wave and we'll see you in the next episode. Tang Endo! Good night! Crossbow Radio Wave, bringing you the fun in Cardfight Vanguard. This program has been brought to you by Crossbow Vanguards. Crossbow Vanguards.